Hello world and welcome to the program. This is Alex and my weekly episode of Ukrainian Unleashed, a podcast where you'll get along with Ukrainians and also observe how the global scenery impacts Ukrainian society in these exciting times. We speak about events, trends, individuals and lifestyles. So let's jump right in! In today's episode you'll get to know how Ukrainian business and creativity helps confront coronavirus, Ukrainian IT industry, where the miracle came from and did it pass its prime, would Ukrainian IT stand up to resist the crisis, did Ukrainian developers turn out to be mercantile and what are their real motives in driving the industry, outsourcing versus product development, will we keep seeing continuous rising of Ukrainian startups on the international stage. Ukrainian IT sector today, hottest opinions and comments. Hey, what's up guys? I hope you are safe and sound. Myself, I'm not bad. I'm finally in Odessa, in my native city, with my family and friends, the majority of whom I haven't seen yet, of course. The weather is just perfect for hearty talks outside. But unfortunately, I'm seeing Zoom screen much more often these days. <laughs> Based on common sense, the quarantine in Ukraine will be extended until May 15th at least. So it's better to get used to all possible online sources for mixing up my life. Actually, in the latest episode I've been talking a lot about the digitalization wave which engulfed Ukrainian boat, let's say, since the end of March. But I haven't asked you about what are your favorite things to do now, among other things to do? <laughs> so please, leave your comment wherever you get my podcast. To start with this episode, I would love to mention first numerous cases of Ukrainian companies that allocated almost 12 million US dollars and bought 59 lung ventilators together with tests, suits for doctors and other necessary gear during the last week to help Ukraine coping with a pandemic. Since our statistics are improving and we have now nearly 1200 confirmed cases of coronavirus infection, our business stepped forward in response to this. And that's not all. As I was telling in one of the videos posted on my YouTube channel, the quarantine measures were strictly stepped up. So starting from April 3rd, there would become forbidden to walk around in parks and recreation zones, to visit play and sports grounds. Teenagers under 14 years old can only leave their sites escorted by their parents. Furthermore, from April 6th, the groups formed by more than two people would be punished if appeared on the streets. I think this is more or less a reality we all live in now. Meanwhile, product delivery services in Ukraine began to choke due to an increase in the number of orders. So one of the IT companies, Powercode LLC, started to build a grocery delivery service called FoodX24, which they promised to become available in 14 days. Well, it looks like Express Hospital's building challenge, doesn't it? The team plans to purchase goods from suppliers, rent a warehouse, hire employees, set up logistics and launch an online service. According to their sources, the company already has a fleet of 620 cars and drivers. Taxi services in Kiev can provide another 1000 cars. The team decided that they could serve 1 million customers per month. Regardless of the weight and quantity of goods, they promised to bring the order in 90 minutes. You can pay it online or in cash. We want to show the business how to transform and look for new niches in a crisis, says a CEO of the company Vladislav Savchenko. The guys admit that the venture is very risky and that in 14 days the team may not meet the deadline, but they are very, very optimistic. They even launched a YouTube channel where everyone can check live how the business is building. CEO of the company promises to tell every day about all the successes and failures of his startup. Well, good luck with this ambitious project. By the way, I think it's nice to focus on the things which still bring us creativity these days. And one of the major sources of inspiration for almost everyone in Ukraine, not only now but also during the last five years, has become the IT industry. A lot of experts predicted that Ukraine could double the IT market size by 2020. With a global growth in this area, Ukraine is well on its way to making a major impact on the new digital 2.0 world in which we live. According to Unit City, the first Ukrainian innovation park, Ukrainian exports of IT services could bring 
5.4 billion US dollars in 2020 and 8.4 billion US dollars in 2025. But will IT meet a glittering future given the current game changing trends or there will be a slowdown in its drastic growth? Let's find out and revise the latest forecasts together. Indeed, the growth of IT services and products in Ukraine grew by 25% in 2018 alone, with the sector achieving a current value of 4.5 billion US dollars. It's no secret that officially Ukraine's IT industry is among the country's fastest growing industries. It is also diverse from cutting edge work in artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, natural language processing, and nanotechnologies to highly commercial ventures in blockchain blockchain, fintech, big data management, gaming, agribusiness, and e-commerce. We say Ukraine's greatest assets, its brains and grains, produce the innovation and opportunities for Ukraine's resurgent economic growth and its growing integration into the global value chain. This development is derived from Ukraine's large base of highly skilled human capital and its focus on Industry 4.0, where the country is well reorganized with its high-tech engineering. But would this be enough to survive the crisis and is the IT industry a heaven-sent opportunity for this? Today, Ukrainian software developers are recognized among the strongest IT professionals globally thanks to their solid technical expertise, high English proficiency level, and knowledge of emerging disciplines. Well, it sounds like a promising background for competing for a sweet spot in the international division of labor, doesn't it? So no wonder a growing number of international giants hire developers in Ukraine to build cutting-edge software solutions. Myself, I work as a sales manager in one of the international e-commerce companies, which was launched only three years ago in the UK. But even though I'm a part of the business unit, I still can say that I have a lot to do with the Ukrainian IT sector. And also, I can call myself a switcher, which means I came from a real sector, having changed my previous job position. The number of so-called switchers, people who switch from any industry to IT, has increased by five times since 2014, increasing the talent base, confirms Igor Ovchernko from SeedStars. But first things first, let me check the general numbers and evolution of the industry to truly understand what's at stake. So Ukraine now is the first outsourcing market in Eastern Europe with 200,000 developers and 420,000 jobs in IT and related industries altogether, which makes us among top 25 IT services exporters in the world. Moreover, we still receive 36,000 tech graduates annually without taking into account attendees of private courses in IT hubs and so-called switchers like me once again. <laughs> The thing is that in December 2019, the Ukrainian government published the updates on population size in Ukraine. According to the new methodology of counting, the number of residents in Ukraine decreased by 11 million people since the year 2001 and now is equal to 37 million people. So, taking into account the number of jobs in the IT and related industries, they are only 1.1% of the total population of the country. Based on that logic, even if in 2020 the future cutoffs of GDP were between 9 or 10%, the IT industry itself would stand the strike as its representatives are not so numerous and can't compete in the internal market. Plus, they are mostly exports oriented. Also, their buying power will only strengthen in the internal market, since the rate of national currency most likely will show negative dynamics. Year by year, Ukraine is harmonizing its international policies and moving towards a more thriving business environment. The country has reached its GDP growth of 4.6% in the second quarter of 2019. Also, Ukraine is in the top 50 countries of the world in terms of the share of IT exports in GDP. 
the USA is only at 139th place and Israel is at 76th place. So this shows us that the IT industry plays a vital role in Ukrainian society even regardless of the limited number of IT specialists in general. But if we look at the Ukrainian IT sector's numbers closer, the IT industry was only ranked 8th in Ukraine's exports in 2018, standing down after metal working production, agriculture, transportation services, machinery manufacturing and food industry. Currently, it creates 4% of Ukrainian GDP, which so far does not seem like a serious force that can pull Ukraine out of the economic crisis if necessary. Although, most likely it will remain one of the few industries and sources of export that crisis won't affect seriously, taking into account all the above-mentioned facts. Every year, Stack Overflow, one of the most popular resources among IT specialists in the world, conducts surveys on which programming languages are paid the most, how many years of experience the developers have, what they value in their work, and so on. Interestingly, in one of the surveys for 2016, among other data, an indicator of the primary importance of money when picking up jobs in IT was also mentioned. By the way, this indicator has never been posted after, and Ukraine appeared to be at the top of the rating. Although the desire to earn more on one hand, of course, speaks of a person's maturity, on the other, it turns out that one can sacrifice self-realization over profitability. You must admit that there is always more satisfaction from working with meaning than from making money from what you don't like. So why did Ukrainian developers turn out to be so mercantile? Probably Probably the main blame is on the crisis of 2014-2015. Despite our IT wasn't particularly affected then, some of the specialists went abroad, while newcomers began to take their places. Like myself, <laughs> just kidding. I changed the scope just two years ago when I found myself in my first startup blockchain oriented. But let's move further. Besides, Ukraine still has the best taxation plan for the IT industry. The ability to work as a solo entrepreneur and pay 5% of the turnover of funds and many do not even do this using platforms such as Pioneer for avoiding taxes. Another interesting fact, the famous Big Mac index shows that our IT specialists have the same level of purchasing power in Ukraine as their peers in the US and Australia. All this make a positive effect on why many software engineers choose Ukraine as their country of residence. For comparison, in the USA and Europe, programmers are not even included to the top 10 of the most paid specialists. The CNBC website informs, except the position of software architect, which was ranked 10th. While in Ukraine, because of the export-oriented IT sphere, software engineers definitely fill the first places in the list of highly paid specialists. A similar situation is observed in other countries of Eastern Europe, like Poland, Romania or Hungary, for example. In Western Europe, there is also a difference in wages. Let's say IT specialists earn about two times more than other professions, but not four or five times like in Ukraine or other Eastern European countries countries because all sectors of the economy grow together without distortion, with similar dynamics, unlike in Ukraine, where many industries and professions still do not provide acceptable income level, like medical sphere, education, production and others. As you might know, IT outsourcing is the first level in the technology and software value chain. However, Ukraine is also rich in successful startups that have attracted millions of dollars in investment annually and become global leaders in specific areas. Clearly, vibrant tech community together with cultural compatibility have to lead to the fact that the country's IT specialists have built strong business relationships with clients from major European hotbeds with venture capital funds such as the UK, Germany, the Netherlands, etc. The work ethics dominating the IT outsourcing industry in Ukraine is very similar to that of Western businesses. Ukraine 
Ukrainian developers are open to challenges and confrontations, get personally involved in the projects they are working on and are interested in facilitating their success. Ukraine is also in the top 20 together with Poland and Israel among 137 countries in terms of ease of registering a new business. Just for your understanding, the USA is on the 53rd place in this ranking. Personally, I have a lot of friends who are more or less engaged with the IT sector in Ukraine. So after talking to them, I can summarize that the majority of our developers work as outsourcing or back office for foreign companies contributing a lot in the creation of the world-class products only as performers, unfortunately, instead of proceeding with their own ideas and projects. But we still have 2000 plus up and coming startups in Ukraine and some of them became dominant names for the whole world like Ajax Systems, Deposit Photos, Preply, Riddle, Grammarly and many others. Most Ukrainian startups are looking to compete on a global scale since their inception and certainly succeeded in moving beyond the local market. So it really seems like the locally incubated global success stories increase the investor appetite for Ukraine. And here is why. Analysts in the U Ventures Investment Fund took data from the WEF Global Competitive Report 2017-2018 and provided statistics on the IT ecosystem of Ukraine and other countries. Based on that, the only thing in which Ukraine is much inferior to Poland, Israel and the United States is access to venture capital. The country is 118th out of 137 countries in the list. Therefore, to survive, Ukrainian startups are forced to initially focus on Western funds and seek funding abroad. Early stage funds and accelerators like 500 Startups, Techstars and E-Combinator are continuously scouting around the country to detect savvy entrepreneurs and capitalize on the opportunity to connect them with the US investors. Undoubtedly, the technology sector has strategic importance for the Ukrainian economy and can redefine the way Ukraine is perceived globally in this age of digital transformation. A new generation of highly educated and creative Ukrainian engineers and the knowledge transfer more and more push Ukrainian companies to switch from pure outsourcing to global product companies and provide the necessary learning infrastructure for the engineers to become well-rounded entrepreneurs. In 2017, companies and startups from Ukraine and the ones with Ukrainian roots made 44 deals for a total of 275 million US dollars, which is a record figure for the industry. So let's hope that the global recession wouldn't be able to interrupt the continuous rising of Ukrainian startups on the international stage. To understand how the things are really going on in Ukraine's IT sector during the last month when the global recession started to evolve, I checked on analytics published by Genie, the biggest and anonymous job search website for IT specialists in Ukraine. They also conducted some interviews with founders of Ukrainian IT companies, which came in handy to comment on the situation. So based on the surveys provided by Genie, more or less clear picture of the IT industry's future will be seen only in one or two months. But even today we can say that the number of vacancies of the companies represented on Genie had decreased by between 20 and 30% during these two weeks. At the same time, the number of candidates has grown by 5% based on the statistics revealed. So I can say that if at the beginning of February 2020 the rate between jobs posted on the platform and the number of candidates was 12.5%, so today the current rate is 6%. This means that the competition in Ukrainian IT sector has doubled during the last five weeks. And Gini says that by the number of jobs posted, they got back to summer 2018. But they also suggest that this is not necessarily bad news. Due to the introduction of quarantine in Ukraine, most companies are now engaged in organizing remote work for their employees and the logistics of interviews in quarantine are rearranging. Genie says that most of the companies they spoke to said that their hiring plans have not changed yet. 
Although linked to a list of IT companies that have made hiring freeze or had layoffs is now circulating across the internet. And because the US is the main client of Ukrainian outsourcing, it will affect Ukrainian market questionless. Some say that a lot of Ukrainian specialists could even start voluntarily cut their rates to face the global competition and get through the hard times. But let's see how CEOs of Ukrainian IT companies comment on the situation. One of the most representative interviews, which was shared on Gini official Telegram channel, was a Zoom cast interview, as they called it, with uh, Alexander Konotopsky, CEO at AX Systems. I will post a link to Gini official on Ukrainian Unleashed channels where it's possible. So Alexander says that the recession today has drastically touched EU markets as people are withdrawn almost from any activities. The situation in Scandinavian countries and Germany is better in terms of sales of his company, he says. Even France and the UK has beaten the sales records in March, but as there are a lot of IT companies who sell their products to distributors, there is a time lag between closing the deals and encashments. So they expect now sales plans to drop by 40 or 50% in April. AX Systems already said 150 people working remotely from almost 1,000 people they have in total. All the people older than 50 years were sent on quarantine. The company also saved 100% of salaries and won't fire any staff as even with the current level of sales, they still can cover it. Alexander expects that they will get back to hiring in June, but this depends on the market situation, of course. At the moment, they just switched to weekly cash flows plan which was a reaction to operating in the unstable environment. His prediction is that IT will see jobs and rates cuts in 2020, but the investment in the digitalization will grow after a while. In the long run, everything will also depend on the IT companies, which are responsible not only for their products, but for their people too. So here, in the end, I think we will be able to see the real face of many employers' brands. This was a new episode of Ukrainian Unleashed podcast. Thanks for being here with me and special thanks to Genio Official Telegram channel for their relevant statistics on a subject and informative interview. I also would love to thank Purple Planet for lovely musical compositions and tunes which were used in this episode. I really appreciate your support, guys. Reactions and subscription to our podcast and YouTube channels. You may also find us on all major platforms like Spotify, Radio Public, Pocket Casts, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Google Play Music, and of course in social media, Facebook, Twitter, and we finally launched our Instagram account with daily updates. Check it out on Insta, it's UA Unleashed. New episodes coming up weekly on Mondays. Stay tuned and safe!